All right. Jonathan, I'm sorry to hear I was rooting for you too. She is not your person. You have grown and you're still growing and deserve someone doing the same. Thank you for helping me on my journey. Oh, I love you, Fro. Thank you so much for that super sticker. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much. Folks, listen, you know, I have to oftentimes ask myself, how can I be a good dating coach if I haven't found someone special in my life? And I recognize that this journey of, of, this journey we call life, this journey we call life has, is not about finding your mate per se. It's about finding the mate inside of you. It's about finding that person inside of you that you can love like nobody's business. And it's taken me better part of 50 years to get to a place where I actually am starting to like and even love myself. This has not been an easy journey for myself. And what I oftentimes think I experience many of the same things you experience, especially from a woman's perspective, even though I'm a male, I feel like I experience a lot of the frustrations women experience so I can actually be a better coach. I oftentimes wonder if I attract a lot of dysfunctionality from women, if you will, and myself as well, as a way to be a better coach. I'm not saying this is a fact because the reality is, as we age, it becomes increasingly harder to find a compatible mate where we share the same values, where our lifestyles are blendable. And more importantly, does this person have emotional maturity? This is why, um, excuse me, I'm going to walk away from the computer for a second because a book fell. This is why I, I really recommend everybody, everybody purchase this book. The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. This book, this book along with, and I highly recommend this book as well, Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. What I love about these two books, it's allowed me to get really to the heart of who I am as a person. When someone asks you, who are you? We oftentimes share the professional status of who we are. We might share that we're parents. We might share that we're, uh, we're, we're children of parents and such like that. But who are you really as a person? That's been the journey for me using the dating dialogue to really get to understand who I am as a person. Now, I don't identify with masculine or feminine energy for myself. I identify with being what I'd like to consider an awakened, evolved, conscious human being. And I feel like I'm only touching the surface of being awake, evolved, or conscious. I feel like I'm just barely touching the surface. So when someone asks me, who are you, John? Jonathan, I'm a human being experiencing life. I'm a spiritual being experiencing having a human experience in a very dysfunctional way. <laughs> because folks, I, I, I'm going to say I feel like my dating habits almost feels dysfunctional. Now, what I mean to say by that is I genuinely want a life mate. So I genuinely make effort. I genuinely make effort out there. I put myself on all the dating apps. I, I, I reach out to people on a regular basis when I feel like there is some compatibility between the two of us. I make the effort to plan dates. I go through the process of asking questions ahead of time, pre-qualifying questions. By the way, that's what I do as a coach. So check out the link to a discovery call with me. And what's interesting is lately, my intuition has been screaming at me. In fact, even that woman that I was all excited about recently, my intuition said something was off because I was feeling a level anxiety between our communication. And what I mean by anxiety, my intuition was screaming at such a level, it was creating anxiety within me because I knew something was off. Folks, inconsistent, coming back to the original conversation here, Inconsistent behavior is the either the excuse of a person not ready for a relationship or it's just a demonstration that they're not on the same page as you. Let me repeat that. 
Inconsistent communication oftentimes means they're not ready for a relationship or they may not be on the same page with you. Now, look, I get that people are busy, okay? But when you're with a person that's aligned to who you are and what you want, then you're going, the, the time you make to, to connect with each other will feel almost effortless. If it feels like you're pulling teeth or they're trying to pull teeth to get you to communicate with them, then that's usually a bad sign that there's a mismatch there. And why I share this with you is I met some really beautiful women. I've met some very kind, generous, loving women. And yet still something didn't feel right that we weren't on the same page. And what I know for myself, I don't want to do is I, I just don't want to go down another rabbit hole with someone that it doesn't feel like we're in alignment. In fact, in one of my most recent mushroom journeys, and those who follow me know I do uh, mushrooms on a regular basis, um, the last journey, what was screaming at me was the desire for resonance, resonance, resonance. That feeling of alignment, that feeling of clicking, that feeling of like we almost can finish each other's sentences. Now, I'm not expecting this on the first, second, or third date per se, but it's just that feeling of alignment, that feeling of resonance. And what gets, what's, what's the tricky part is chemistry is so deceptive. Chemistry is so deceptive and I am not immune to that chemistry bug. And if you're familiar with my relationship iceberg, you know, you can see it right here. This is, it says chemistry is on the tip of the iceberg, but below the, which above the waterline is attraction and below the waterline is compatibility, shared values, blendable lifestyles and emotional maturity. Emotionally mature person doesn't ghost you. Emotionally mature person, at least if they're not interested, they at least give you a good bullshit excuse why they're not interested. They do the whole George Costanza. It's not George Costanza. It's not you. It's me. So I'm here to say just to come full circle on what I'm sharing here. I oftentimes question, am I a good coach? Now, thankfully, I get emails after emails and phone calls after phone calls from clients who have worked with me. Jonathan, I met a great guy. Jonathan, I met a great guy. Jonathan, I met a great guy. And they know the difference. So I know I'm making a difference in other people's lives. And you know what? Whether I meet my soulmate day after tomorrow or tomorrow, let's, let's not wait a day after tomorrow, tomorrow or two months from now or two years from now. You know what? We all have our own divine timing. And that's why I highly recommend reading all these books. And I recommend if you really want to connect with your heart, then read the book, If the Buddha Dated, If the Buddha Dated, because this throws out all the bullshit gender rhetoric dating practices and helps you connect with your heart because this isn't a masculine or feminine thing. This is a heart thing because ultimately we, are, we choose relationships to feel good, to feel good in our heart because most of us don't need someone from a financial perspective. So let's make better choices going forward. And I invite you to do the work ahead of time so you can be prepared for juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship. All right, thank you so much for that. All right, we're gonna take one more question.